Seoul, the capital of South Korea, viewed from a certain angle, it reminds one of the paintings depicting the world after an apocalypse. Skyscrapers rising up from deep greenery, the forest capturing the city, roof gardens, bushes on the motorway. But in fact, this is all the result of the efforts made over the last few years to make the capital more environmentally friendly. In the center of Seoul, you'll find the Kunbukun Palace, which was the main royal palace of the Choson dynasty. This dynasty ruled the country from the 14th century nearly up to the 20th century. It'd be quite interesting to learn how they used to live, what happened behind those walls. But I'm even more curious to find out what they ate. Let's make ourselves a proper royal meal. I must note that the life of Korean monarchs followed a strict routine. They didn't eat whatever they pleased. Instead, they ate according to a set of rules because food held a sacred meaning. That's why, in this case, royal cuisine is not merely about luxurious eating. It's a collection of recipes created over centuries. Today, the royal meal is cooked by experts. Not only should they be brilliant at cooking, they should be familiar with the history and the etiquette nuances of the past. To start with, we'll need to find such a cook. I started my search with a trip to the oldest food market in Seoul, Guangzhou. Just a few steps away from the skyscrapers, we find ourselves in the narrow market streets, which look almost the same as they did one and two hundred years ago. The womb of Seoul. It's semi-dark here, both day and night, and here you can have a taste of anything that can run, swim, grow and fly at any time of the day. Almost every counter has a cooker where you can have anything you want, cooked straight away. There are hundreds of such small eateries. You can find anyone here, regardless of their social standing. The people are welcoming and foreigners don't feel foreign in this kingdom of exotic Asia. I was just about to taste these fresh and juicy treats when I realized they're artificial. Many discover that only after taking a bite. In fact, Koreans are very good at producing fake food. So beware. Artificial food that is skillfully made from plastic, papier-mâché, or other materials are on display in the shop windows of cafes and restaurants. And it costs much more than regular food. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to find any royal cuisine here. Our food is not royal, it's very simple. Here, try this. And if you want royal food, you go to the palace. I had to settle for what was available here. Not bad. Unfortunately, I have no idea what this is, though. There's surely some radish, soy sauce, and sesame in it. Generally, there's a lot of unusual food in Seoul. Why don't we take a walk and look for the most bizarre fast food place? 
Having said that, there are plenty of bizarre foods here. Okay, Luke. This is meat. Meat. This is corn flour, corn starch. Yeah. Honey, look. Wow. It's very hard. Wow. Very hard. Wow. And punching. Yep. Now with my hand, look. Little by little. Stretching. Stretching. Two. Yeah. Four. Four. Eight. eight five. Seven. And middle long. Yeah. One thousand twenty-four. Made by noodles. Sweets wow. called kunzutaro are cooked with a zest. In a figurative sense of the word, it is the most amusing street food in the city. The sellers make a real performance trying to entertain the audience. I think they're specially trained. Very, very yummy. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Korean. Wow. Thank you. By the way, kunjutaro is cooked according to an old royal recipe. Royal food turned fast food. Okay, this. You want that? Yes, okay. I want this big box. Okay. Then show me the money. Money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's right. Here, here, here. Don't touch the money. Don't touch the money. Here. Ah, okay. Yeah. We are making coup. Don't touch the money. And um, can I take some? No, 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 no. All no, my no, money. Here, 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 here. here. <laughs> no money. Here, here. Okay. <laughs> This is now is almond, mm. Mm. almond chocolate. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. See you later, alligator. Wow, wow. Thank you. 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 Thank the peculiarity of Korean desserts is that they are not too sweet, because sugar was introduced to Korea relatively recently, that is, to the general public. That's exactly how I like it. The guys didn't lie to me. It is very, very yummy. Koreans are rather hardworking, so fast food places which cater a fast lunch are very popular. For lunch, company employees enjoy a samgak kimbap. The main key here is to open it so that the seaweed, which is separate, stays wrapped around the rice. Seaweed, rice, and a fish or meat filling very healthy food. Strolling up and down the streets of Seoul, you will not only encounter strange foods, but also strange drinks. Wow! Do you know what this is? It's sugarcane. I wonder what they do with it. Hello. Can I try the thing you make out of this sugar cane? Try this. It says no sugar, which is impossible because sugar cane itself contains a lot of sugar. In fact, the drink is very sweet. You know, I'd say this drink has a herbal taste. And despite its sweetness, it quenches your thirst very well. This way, by crossing a couple of seal quarters, you can have everything from dessert to dessert. Do you know what this is? At first, I decided it was nautical rope, but it turned out to be a... biscuit. And this is the ice cream. If you ever find ice cream that looks even stranger, Give me a call. I'll definitely visit that city. Yeah. 
Seoul, like any modern metropolis, mixes traditions, including culinary ones. I decided to continue my haunt for royal recipes in the conservative provinces. A five-hour drive from the capital in the Kunsun province, there's an amazing reserve. It's not a nature reserve. What it does is takes care of the traditions and customs of the Korean past. This is the perfect place to look for ancient recipes. The folk village Hae is translated as River Bend. Though there are a lot of tourists, it's not an amusement park. The village is absolutely authentic. Just as it was built 600 years ago, so it stands today. Members of the Ryu clan have lived here ever since. Three years ago, UNESCO included Hae on their list of World Heritage Sites. Wow! A battery-operated tricycle for grown-ups. How can you resist that? Due to the river, which separates the village from its neighbors, the villagers have stuck to traditional ways. 500-year-old houses, books, and crafts have remained intact. And this is not a film set. These are real residential homes. People have lived here generation after generation. The 230 villagers, whose last name is mostly Ryu, are the living exhibits of this village. They seem quite content with their life. They're used to seeing the streets full of foreign and local tourists, and they welcome those who want to spend a couple of days here in their old houses. Despite the fact that tourism made this village flourish, the Ryu clan continue to fish and toil the land. I almost reached my goal when I discovered that the locals cook a special dish based on a royal recipe. It's called Tsim Duck. Just a few dozen years ago, a regular Korean's ration was rather limited. Not many people could afford meat and poultry. After the war, the USA started giving humanitarian aid to Korea, including food. Cooks and housewives saw food they'd never seen before. For example, chicken. What could they possibly do with this exotic food? Firstly, drown it in soy sauce. If you are persistent enough, even chicken could finally taste like normal food. The recipe was based on a royal one, but originally a very rare and expensive food was used, beef. The aroma of chicken seemed too strong and not particularly appealing to Koreans. So they came up with a solution. How do you think they did it? Garlic. That's why they've put so much garlic here. The result was a good and unusual taste. Interesting. American fried chicken acquired an Eastern flavor. This dish is a culinary symbol of the attitude of Korea towards the phenomena of the Western world. It accepts them, tries them, and then modifies them to fit their culture. We can do the same. Write down the recipe. For two portions of Tim Duck, we'll need 400 grams of chicken, 150 grams of onion and the same amount of potatoes and noodles. We'll also need 70 milliliters of rice vodka, if available, garlic, red chili, 12 grams of sugar, and 30 milliliters of soy sauce and a teaspoon of sesame oil. Generally, sesame seed is very popular in Korea. 
Boil the chicken meat and then add the sauce and the other ingredients to the broth. Continue boiling until the broth turns into a thick gravy. Then place the noodles and onions into it and continue boiling until ready. Leaving Hahe, I couldn't help but think that if modern civilization had to one day disappear, this village would continue its mundane life as if nothing had happened. By the way, Korea owes one of its culinary traditions to Russia. In 1896, King Von Konjon, fleeing from the Japanese, found refuge in the Russian embassy where he stayed for one year. During this period, the wife of Russian ambassador Karl Weber introduced him to coffee, which was unknown to him. Later on, the habit of drinking coffee spread all over the king's court and further into the entire country. Despite the fact that the culinary introduction into the history of Korea has turned out to be very tasty and educational, I still haven't had the chance to taste real royal food. Fortune finally smiled upon me in the city of Gwangju. Madam Cho Yu Su, Korea's most prominent royal cuisine expert, agreed to see me. This memorable dinner took place in a house built in 1864. I have attended handsome dinners before, but this table is… it's all for one person. Tell me, how many dishes are there here? There are 12 starters, which will be followed by main courses, and soups. A regular person could have up to 9 starters on the table at the same time. High-ranking officials, up to 11. More than that, only to royalty. So you see, in the old days, having counted the number of starters, you could conclude who the house belongs to. Show you soon. What should we start with? We'll be starting with Kujo Plan, a plate of nine starters. Meat and vegetables. Looks like a culinary rainbow. Place a little bit on the pancake. Like this? Koreans love spicy food. That's why their mustard is quite strong. Now, kajache, it's a salad. You mean shrimps with sesame seeds? And I need to put these in the mustard? No, no. Just like this? Strange, they're in some sort of icing. Tastes a little sugary. These, my dear sirs, are sweet shrimp. The royal cooks started studying the art of cooking from the age of five or six. The most talented ones stayed in the citadel permanently. They were not allowed to go outside. That is why the royal recipes became available to the public only after 1910, with the end of the Choson dynasty. I noticed a dish here that looks rather dangerous. Chosun, what is this? This is shellfish. Tender taste and not a single bone. Chosun, we almost forgot about the soup. This is miyokuk, a seaweed and prawn soup. Taste of the sea. Not that salty, though. We sit here in a simple way. However, the monarch's food was served on special little tables. Your head would start spinning. It looks like the king was very busy back in the day. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, hardly any time left for sleep. Chayson, what's this? Here you are. This is a punch with scoops of watermelon. <laughs> well, this is the only case watermelon looks like a proper berry. No, no, you don't eat it with chopsticks. You need to use a spoon. Okay. If you say spoon, I'll use a spoon. Mm. 
A regular watermelon. You shouldn't place a spoon this way. Turn it on the other side. Okay, okay, I get it. Okay. It looks like the king had to study a manual on how to eat before proceeding with the food, so that Chi Yusun wouldn't scold him. When it comes to a royal dinner, not only do you need a big appetite, but also a very good memory, so that you can remember at least half the dishes when you want to boast about it to your friends. Chu Sun, I understand those dishes are very sophisticated. But do you think we can share a recipe with our audience? Yes. I will show you how to prepare the most important royal dish, the symbol of our country, kimchi. Based on the results of questionnaires, kimchi rates second among the symbols of Korea straight after the state flag. You simply can't go without kimchi. For instance, the first Korean astronaut, Yi Soyoung, took it with her to the International Space Station. Now, Chi Yusun and I will teach you how to prepare kimchi. The main ingredient is cabbage. This isn't regular cabbage. This type is often referred to as Korean and sometimes Chinese cabbage. We make a cut, pour salt all over it and place it in water. It needs to fully absorb the salt. In Russia, kimchi is not very well known. We have a thing called Korean carrots, but in Korea, they know nothing about it. Now we leave the cabbage in the basin to become saturated with salt. In the meantime, we prepare the paste. Cut garlic and spring onions. There you go, you're doing well. That's what they say about me. Anton Zaitsev might not be the best, but when it comes to cutting onions, hmm. But the main secret of kimchi is the paste. And now, we'll find out what it's made of. It has sesame, <laughs> these are spring onions, finely cut spring onions. Garlic, with a bit of ginger for aroma. Again, sesame, but this time it's ground. Fish sauce. You can find Vietnamese fish sauce in our shops. That'd be perfect. If you can't, use anchovy sauce. Red chili. It's hot! Now we mix all of the ingredients that we diced with the paste. And finally, we thoroughly cover each cabbage leaf with the sauce. There is a great variety of kimchi recipes. In the Seoul Museum, there are about 187. But as we know, each housewife has to have one of her own secret recipes. Now we wrap the cabbage leaf so that the paste stays inside. Here, what a beauty. Now, we leave the kimchi to stand for about a day at room temperature so that it soaks in the juices. Then put it in the fridge and kimchi's ready. The first mention of kimchi goes back to 1000 BC. However, it acquired its modern looks in the 17th century, when Portuguese merchants brought chili to Korea, and the entire country lost its heart to this food. I concluded that kimchi is a true king of the Korean table, because for centuries it's held a special place on both the plate of a monarch and the plate of a poor fisherman. The history of this dish perfectly illustrates the national character that combines traditionalism with the willingness to try something new. Thank you.